But for me, Squarespace is just simple, it's clean. I can get stuff done quickly. If I need to code, then I can outsource and get someone to do coding for the site. I prefer using WordPress because I don't feel limited in my design. I also feel like I have the option to use a lot of different custom things. So today we're going to talk about a subject that actually gets asked to me a lot and it's kind of weird. I found it very weird because I design all of my sites using WordPress. Most of my clientele, they need robust solutions, they need a lot of different specific tools that they, they just need WordPress for. And what this question actually came up a lot talking to a few, you know, kind of freelancer type people who needed sites and what I've noticed is a lot of people want to use Squarespace and it's obviously a worse tool, right? <laughs> it's obviously a worse tool to me, you know, that's my opinion, but it's kind of good in a lot of ways. And actually this video is not all about which one is better because you're going to realize pretty quickly that they both have a lot of different capabilities. <laughs> and so and so Mason here works for a company called Ma Nectar Production and um, he's actually head of the honey producing department. Oh yeah, yeah. So <laughs> sweet honey. Yeah, so he builds a lot of websites and he primarily uses Squarespace and we're going to kind of talk about the why he likes Squarespace and I'm going to talk about why I like WordPress and then we're going to kind of battle it out on the computer and try to create a test site and see who can create it faster or see, you know, what's the comparison? Like, what's the process to create it on both tools? So if you're considering this for your own business, this is a good video for you to kind of make that decision with, so. I, the way that I come to building websites is that I design, so I've been around design for a while, but I don't code, terrible at it. And so for me, WordPress is legit the devil. <laughs> um, I, I, I've been through WordPress a lot. Um, and I'm just extremely inefficient when it comes to it. I know that you can do a lot more um, in-depth stuff with plugins and all kind of neat stuff, but for me, Squarespace is just simple, it's clean. I can get stuff done quickly. If I need to code, then I can outsource and get someone to do coding for the site. Mm. So and most so, of my clients don't need custom solutions. And so you don't, you don't really feel limited when you fire up a site for someone? No, it just, it's, limitations and creativity are a good thing because mm -hmm. it forces you to think outside the box yeah. but even with Squarespace there's there's plenty of options of how to make a site your own it's they give you a starting point which is great for people you know just like replace but when I build a site I just delete everything I start from scratch but use a template as kind of a starting point but you can change so much a lot of people don't know about the design page there's a lot of fun options in there for making a site unique. Cool. I prefer using WordPress because I don't feel limited in my design. I also feel like I have the option to use a lot of different custom things if I need to and it's not going to require me to do all these crazy things to get it to work. Mm -hmm. um, it's very ubiquitous. so um, That's kind of why I prefer to use it. It's a, it's a lot like the Windows type thing, you know, where most businesses are going to use Windows because it's designed to work with everything. You know, you couldn't, you know, if your client is a dry cleaner, you're not going to give them a Mac you know, to run yeah. their point of sale system. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just not good. The cost efficiency is yeah, so not that good. Yeah, so it's similar. It's a similar comparison. So, yet there are a lot of strengths to using a Mac, as you can tell I use one. So. Yeah, I love Mac. I mean... The new cheese grater Mac Pro was interesting to me, but I got I got to think about that for a while. It's expensive. Yeah, <laughs> I well, mean, I'm sure it can do some great stuff, but man, that's a well. There's a lot of different ways you can grade the cheese with it. You know, you can kind of yeah, <laughs> so, wax on. Yeah, it, so you can grate from any angle. Yeah, it's circular, so you can hit it from all sides. I feel like it would give you really big pieces of cheese. <laughs> So, actually, you know what? That would be an amazing video. Like, let's get Jake's old Mac Pro 
and do a cheese grater like functionality versus the new one functionality. Hey, and if you get enough subscribers and we get enough revenue, you can just buy the Mac and we'll test it. We, we will, will test do, it for we you. We will cheese grate it. Yes. <laughs> So we're, we're going to go over a couple of different points of, you know, their strengths and weaknesses. First one is features. Second one is ease of use. Third one is design. Fourth one is e-commerce. And then fifth one is marketing tools such as SEO, MailChimp, YouTube, you know, different integrations. And then we're going to go over the pricing. So we're going to go over all these main points to kind of compare them. And then we're so, going to build something. Yeah, then we're going to build something. Yeah. So first, let's talk about features. Um, which one, in your opinion, do you think? Like, well, no, just just tell me, like, what do you think about the features? Features about Squarespace. So, yeah. things that I really like about Squarespace is that it naturally works across multiple uh, aspect ratios, and so that means it works with your phones, iPad, screen of different sizes, and it's really intelligent the way it resizes. And I don't have to go in and code that; it just mm -hmm. works. And so, it's, for me, that's a massive time saver and when it comes to delivering content because most people don't look at sites on desktop as much as I love you know using desktop as a browser but most people use phone and that's about it for checking out sites yep. if someone wants to check out your business they, they go to maps they make sure you're on the map they go look at site like okay cool it's a site and then they just close it and they go visit you and yeah, that's, we that's where most of your attention for like storefront yeah we look at our analytics on our sites and it's like 60% of mobile or greater usually and that's why you want to make sure you have your phone number at the top yep and your location yeah so yeah all right so features of wordpress i would say that comparing to what mason was saying he talks about how easy it is to make a responsive website that works with ipad mobile and desktop um I have a little bit different way of approaching WordPress that a lot of people don't necessarily know when they're creating a site. And so it does take a little bit of knowledge to kind of put a few things together to where it is easy. It's kind of like it's kind of like knowing what tools to throw in there to where it's pretty easy to do. And when I use these tools that I'm going to show you in the test site, it's a pretty it's a pretty fun and easy experience. Um, and then that leads me to our next one, which is ease of use. And I would say, compared to what WordPress was, compared to what you had to do when I first started this stuff, like five to ten years ago, when I first started like messing with sites, um, WordPress was Word, WordPress was pretty complex, and, and all of them were, were complex at that point. But now WordPress, with a lot of updates and functionality changes, web design has changed to the point where there's a lot less coding. It's a lot more drag and drop, you know. So it's it's gotten easier. That's good. I haven't so I haven't dug in a lot into um, WordPress in the last few years. So I haven't been paying attention to all the updates and easy use stuff. For uh, I can speak for the Squarespace side of it's really easy to use. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, yeah. it doesn't take a rocket scientist, and it automatically lays out stuff to make it look great. You know, you can go in and do custom stuff with spacing and, you know, all kind of stuff. You can go into change parameters if you don't like things. But just naturally, the way it's built, like, stuff generally looks pretty good. And it automatically resizes for different screens, so it's going to look pretty great across platform. I mean, there's things you can do to optimize, you know, of just, like, knowledge of when to use different ratio of images, for example, and how to plug them in cleverly. But... And you're it's, not you're not gonna have to do all the optimization. You're not gonna have to make sure that the images are correctly sized. It's a lot like uploading to Facebook in the yeah. sense that it's throwing it on there, you know. And I mean, honestly, I I, I hear people look at Squarespace and they're like, oh, you just Squarespace. But if I see a a, a great screenplay or you know a book a book that I like, I'm like, oh, you use Microsoft Word. <laughs> like yeah. who cares we, you know, <laughs> the content is what matters and the tool is irrelevant yeah a lot of people design in something like experience design by Adobe or Dreamweaver and they throw the site together hard code and they upload it so it, it depends on your client's needs and 
part of the reason why I think Squarespace and WordPress are strong, stronger than trying to use like your own custom site is the sense that you can give your customer something to where they can actually get in there and do what they need to do. Like they want to make posts yeah. or update images. Yeah. Know? I mean, you're not going to build Facebook in Squarespace. Like it's, it's not quite that thick. Yes. But, uh, yeah. So you can't, there are for yeah. 95% of businesses. They, yeah, they can get the tools. They fantastic. Need. Yeah. And what I deal with a lot is people who, they don't need like a portfolio. They need, they don't need a visual site. That's just to show their work. What I deal with a lot is people who are actively selling things online or are actively, you know, needing people to have an interactive kind of like booking system on their site or things like that. And it's, so that's where you would see people that need a lot of different plugins to kind of make that happen. So for my end of it, uh, when people need scheduling apps and stuff like that, I usually just link it to another site. Mm-hmm. You know, you, uh, the website doesn't have to be everything. It can link to places that are better at certain things. You know, it can mm-hmm. link to Facebook, link to YouTube, because that's where your you link to Instagram, so it can have a feed of Instagram pictures, and that'll update, which is fantastic. But if they want to keep up your Instagram, they go to your Instagram too. Mm-hmm. But uh, for scheduling and stuff I use just a secondary site and then set up a clean looking button that links to the other site then they can schedule an appointment so the third point here is design and I want to say that Squarespace definitely wins this one because it's like you're getting something that's already been designed very very well and it's it's ubiquitous enough to where you can change enough things to where it's not it's not like you're just copy pasting someone's site. You know, you can change fonts, you can you can change layouts. And but out of the gate for people that want something that already looks good, it already looks good. WordPress, it's gonna take you a, a little bit to make it look good. You can make it look just as good, you can make it look better, but it's gonna take you some time to do that. So it's like building a custom car. If you take it to somewhere and pay them to build it, you get to pick out all the stuff and tell them to do it, and they'll build it. And so that's, for me, Squarespace. I just take it to the shop, and I'm like, hey, you know, lay it like this, this, this. For me, the other uh, option is, like, building it yourself. So you you go out and, like, weld things, (laughs) which is great if you like welding, but for me, it's just not my life, so I don't don't go that in. So fourth point here is e-commerce. So a lot of websites, a lot of web designers are gonna need to do e-commerce. Your best option on on WordPress is WooCommerce. It's a plugin, a very large plugin. You install that on your sites, it's pretty good. So what would be your option for Squarespace and how would that work? Okay, so um, this kind of spills into pricing a little bit. With Squarespace, there's different plans and it depends on what you're doing with the site. If you wanna sell, you need to have a business plan, which I think is $18 a month. If you're not selling, it's like twelve dollars a month. But uh, as far as the commerce end, you can sell stuff on your site, like merchandise and stuff. But once you start getting super complicated, it gets harder to do. Mm. There's, I mean, it's it's really clean the way it does it. I, I've been through the process a couple of times, and it's it's really clean and user friendly, and uh, it works fantastically. But as far as organizing large amounts of product it can be like, like shipping and all that yeah know? I mean the shipping so it's it, there's there's a lot of fantastic ways you can do it and you can set shipping for different rates and mm-hmm. you know the sky's the limit is how you want to build it but when it comes to organizing a large large amount of products it can be more grueling and if you're considering trying to do like a plug and play solution like this for e-commerce you might want to look into Shopify that's a separate video Shopify is a lot like Squarespace in the sense that it's anyone can use it, but it's totally geared towards e-commerce. And if you've ever run an e-commerce store, what you realize is there's always one thing that you just can't do with whatever plugin, and you're just like, ah. Oh. And so, with even with WordPress, with one of my clients, we use WooCommerce, and we ended up having to spend like four hundred dollars on plugins just to do specific things that were like we need to do this 
we need to do product add-ons, we need to do this special shipping rate because all of our shipping is actually different for each product. It's not simple. You know, so yeah, if, so it's, it's not just like the price per shipping yeah. solution. So if you're going to sell t-shirts on your site, then it's no big deal. But if you're going to actually do like a drop ship, you know, drop ship store, then you might want to look into Shopify if you want something easy. I'll go over WordPress a little bit more and talk a little bit about why you might consider that option. So, all right, so that is, let's see, that's e-commerce. Marketing tools, I want to talk about this a little bit. Sure. I, I just don't know what they're saying here. So I haven't looked into it, but it says here you get a few different analytics tools, you get SEO features for site visibility. Mm -hmm. And what is that? I've never used any of it. Okay. <laughs> I just make the site clean. I make sure that you know everything's set up on the back end of it, but I uh, never pushed into that that world. Okay. So SEO, if you guys don't, <laughs> so if you guys don't know, SEO is basically search engine op search engine optimization, which means Google wants your site to look a certain way. Yes. And they figured out through a couple of different plugins and tools they figured out what Google likes and by using these plugins or by using the built-in tools on Squarespace you can kind of put the right keywords in your site and you can put the right format biggest thing is you want to have a fast loading site you want to have a site with a lot of words <laughs> a lot of words and a lot of words that relate to you a lot of content blog posts blog posts are great because your it's new words it's new everywhere. words everywhere, and it's related to totally different things from your business. So, you you've seen this. You have searched for something like like why is my air conditioner not um, cooling right now? You've searched for that, and then it pulled it up on a blog post on an HVAC company site. You know, and you're like, wow, interesting, interesting place to find this instructional thing. But what they're doing is increasing traffic to their site. They're creating keywords. You know, so. That's kind of what SEO would be. And it's really, it's not this, a lot of people, it's a lot like marketing. You know, SEO is not this like crazy, mysterious science. Yeah, so the SEO is kind of a wash. It's not really something that you can, if you're at that point, you probably already know what you want to do. So don't worry about that. <laughs> All right, then the next one that we want to go over is pricing. Pricing is where it gets really interesting, okay? The pricing, I'm gonna pull this up on the screen. I've made this helpful image that's gonna help you kinda of put together pricing comparisons. So if you're just doing one site, if you're doing your personal site, this isn't gonna to matter to you. It's really not gonna matter because either way you're kinda of paying monthly and you're gonna end up paying a very, very similar pricing. So as you can see here, personal is $144 a year, all the way up to $480 a year if you're doing like advanced commerce, you know. And if you're doing the advanced one, you're probably, there's, yeah, I mean. You're selling a lot of inventory and you don't want to have them take cut permission, um, percentages of your sale. Yeah. For majority of people, personal is great. Even businesses, personal is great. Yeah. Unless you're selling stuff, then you'll go to business. Mm-hmm. And then, as you can see here, down here, they take a 3% transaction fee, but then that goes away if you go to the advanced plans. Mm -hmm. um, Meaning if you sell a shirt for $10, they take $0.30. Cent. Yeah. So what I'm going to say here on pricing is, as you can see here in the top left, the average WordPress hosting costs around $7 a month or $84 a year. That's just hosting. That doesn't include maintenance from you know whoever your builder is or anything like that. That's just simple hosting and that's really your only fixed cost the rest is you can decide what you want to pay but what I will say is there's so many things that you might add on that you're gonna need on your site like what if you're like I really want this premium theme it's gonna be very similar pricing even though it is technically cheaper it's not it's just gonna be very similar okay but when you're doing multiple sites, that's where it gets interesting, okay? If you are a web developer, it is in your best interest to use WordPress 
hosting for the pricing because if you have your own server, you can put unlimited sites on there. And a lot of plugins, if you buy premium plugins, they're gonna give you an option to put it on like thousands of sites for like a pretty good deal. And so your pricing is gonna go almost to like, you know, almost very low. But with Squarespace, it seems that you're always going to have this fixed monthly amount. That might be a good thing for some people, it might be a bad thing depending on if you're doing like, if you're doing hundreds of sites and all of your customers are paying these monthly things, you know, that's something that you might want to consider. So the way that I set it up is I don't charge them for any of the Squarespace stuff. I set it up and then I give it to them and they pay it however they like. It's immensely cheaper if you pay it by the year. So the rates here, $12 and $18 for those personal business. Mm -hmm. That's only if you pay for the year in full. If you go month to month, it's more expensive. So they're, rep they're responsible for paying. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I mean, it's just business expenses are. And what um, I what I generally do, the way I set it up is I have a server that costs me around it's it's around like twenty dollars a month, but I can put around a hundred sites on there, and I have customers pay me directly for their maintenance fees, which usually I charge from twenty to fifty dollars depending on their needs, and um, I mean it. it Depends. Like if it's a really massive site, it can be hundreds of dollars monthly, you know, for different things that they need. But I just bill them directly, monthly or yearly if they want to pay that. And then I just have that all on my server. So it just goes directly to me. They deal with me directly. They don't have to worry about any kind of hosting or anything like that. And so I would handle the maintenance directly with them. So. For me, it's the the reason that Squarespace works with me is because of the customer support that they have. Mm -hmm. I perpetually message them if I have weird issues with stuff that I can't find online. I mean, I, I do try to read and so I don't bother them too much, but I'm pretty sure they have me on a blacklist somewhere so that he messages too much. Yeah. But I build them a lot of sites and hopefully get them a lot of business. Yeah. But I like that the fact that it's an easy platform that I can hand off because I consider it to be a product uh uh, a, a complete website handed off and I want it to be easy for them I don't want them to be relying on me to fix stuff if something comes mm -hmm. up I want it to be them uh, if they need something done they can contact Squarespace and be like hey you know I'm having issues with this and they're super friendly they're helpful and they'll point you in the right direction if they need to hire me to come back in and make more stuff then I can do that but I like for the transition to be easy to where they're not relying on me to uh keep it updated yeah and so this is something that if you're gonna be a developer if you're gonna offer sites to people that's something to consider for sure is how do you want to set it up how do you want the maintenance to be because passing the maintenance off to a professional company that probably has 24 7 support do they have that they they do over email but they have a live okay. text through the day do they have a live the chat yeah live chat's real good yeah, because um, I, I, I'm not sure exact times, but I know like Monday through Friday, normal business hours. They, I mean, yeah, really good. Either way, you're gonna get if you handle the maintenance for someone, you're gonna get bothered a lot. And passing that off to someone who is that's what they do. There's a lot of benefits to that. There, it's really good, you know. So for my just from the the business my business's point of view, it, yeah. it makes a lot of sense because and it helps the business that I work for too because. Squarespace is going to be faster at fixing stuff than I am. Yeah, and my philosophy is kind of, I want to sell people on my product. I want to support the product. I want to have full control over what product they get. I don't want them to be reliant on another company because I can't, even if it's a great company, I can't trust that company in the end to handle that. So I, I try to make sure that I handle, I try to make sure that I charge enough for the maintenance up front for the hassle factor that it's going to be you know if you have hundreds of sites with kind of maintenance on it you can generally afford to offer them support throughout the month and most people don't need that much and if they're paying hosting anyway they look at it as kind of like you know he's a little bit more expensive for the hosting but we get kind of back and forth support from him so it's yeah that's kind of how i look at it 
And some people like having someone to talk to. Absolutely. Like actually voice. For me, it doesn't bother me. Uh, you know, sending someone a, a message to f- figure out a problem, text, you know, technical solution. I enjoy talking to people, but um, for specifically technical things, it it's just as easy to, you know, send someone a message and have them figure out the solution to the problem. Yeah. And so I... I come at it as I sell Squarespace as a product yeah. that I pass off because then I can be hands off. Because from my point of view, if I build a hundred sites and I make X dollars, then I have to maintain them for the life of their site. You know, if the life mm-hmm. of their site is like two to five years, and that means a hundred clients are going to perpetually come to me with things that they have to do mm-hmm. to keep the sites up, and I'm not getting paid on the back end for any of that. The only mm-hmm. way I could do that is to charge a premium up front, but business capital isn't always what you want it to be. And so I'm able to charge less and hand off the site. And then mm-hmm. if they have issues and they need to pay me again to come in and fix it, then I can do it. Mm-hmm. But the majority of things are not going to break, and Squarespace can handle all the mm-hmm. the issues that you might run into. Yeah, Save I, money that way. I think it depends a lot on your client. Um I'm probably going to start offering Squarespace sites to kind of freelancer type people um, as an option if they want to handle it. I just see, from a business standpoint, I see a lot of potential issues with giving someone a lot of control over something they buy from you, um, especially if they have no understanding on it. To me, giving someone a lot of control over what they have, especially with something that involves a lot of code... It can be a good thing for a lot of people, but you need to have some sort of maintenance plan because you are going to get calls from people monthly that expect it to work. You know, they're already expecting it to work whether you charge them or not. And so you might as well charge them like a premium hosting cost because they're getting your support. So that's kind of how I look at it. Like, I don't want to just hand someone something and say, here you go, especially knowing. Again, with WordPress, you know, WordPress is not Squarespace. It's mm-hmm. like if I hand them that, it's if if I if I hand them a WordPress site, it could very well become a minefield. Yeah, for them, you know. Yeah, <laughs> they could, yeah, they I mean, could they delete and press one button wrong, and then go, oh gosh. And and that's why I also store backups. Yeah. All of the sites that I do, I have multiple multiple backup systems. I have the customer has their own backup system. I have my own secret backup system. <laughs> Just in case. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to ask you about is it says here on their pricing sheet, complete customization with CSS and JavaScript. So that means that for the business one, I mean, for the personal one, you can't do custom coding. Right. So if you want to start doing custom stuff, you have to get the business plan. And what does that mean? What is so it comes to like when you want to inject code to do special things. Mm-hmm. Like there's a, um, a site that I did where they needed a calendar from Google. Mm-hmm. And so I spent, you know... Did you Tens of hours trying to figure out how to make it work, and then it turned out I just needed to do some custom code injection. So I found someone online that had code written, so I copied and pasted it, put it in, and mm-hmm. did a little bit of adjusting, and it, it works all right. Was it but like, it had to do business plan. So was it like an HTML know. file or something? Or? It was a Google Docs calendar and you that needed to be entered. In. There might have been paste? a way to do it into the you know standard, but I couldn't figure it out. I had to go custom code. Did you paste it into an HTML block or something, or did yeah? You... So it gives you more options when you pay for the, the a different plan. It just kind of opens up more windows that you can have. Uh, but it's just in the in the page you can go to settings and then there's a code injection. Cool. Block that you can type in whatever you want to make. It, you can bend the site. You can break the site by doing code injection if you want to. But okay. Well, cool. So that I think covers it. And we're going to start here. We're going to design some sites. Um, First off, I'm going to let Mason take it. But before I do that... Oh, (laughs) oh yeah. I wanted to go over this before we do that. Um, As you can see here, this is interesting statistics. You can see that the percentage of all websites, 33.6% of the entire web is WordPress. That's pretty insane. That's a third of all websites. And of the content managed services market, which means anything that isn't like hard coded from the ground up, like YouTube, Facebook, those 
kinds of sites, 60%. So it's pretty pretty big market share. And then Squarespace is pretty low at 2.7. So it's, you're not, you know, we're comparing something that's not necessarily being compared, but I know a lot of people are trying to consider what option to use. So. And you know, the lower percentage isn't a bad thing from my point of view. Because if you're doing the cookie cutter just like exactly as a site has built on Squarespace, it's like, you know, only what, 2% of the sites are using Squarespace. Mm -hmm. And then you have, you know, 50 different options for uh, templates to base it off of. And then no one's going to know that uh, it's Squarespace unless they build a Squarespace site that was similar to yours and they use the same template. And they're like, oh, I kind of recognize the font or whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, unless you're a developer, you're not going to care. Yeah, I mean, even if you do recognize, who cares? <laughs> I mean, I can tell a WordPress site when I see one. I can tell a Squarespace site when I see one. But sometimes it's confusing. Like, for example, I'm going to show you this site, and I want you to guess what it is, okay? I'm going to pull up this uh, site, and I want you to tell me, like, your guess as to, like, who made it. Well, not who made it, but, you know. What platform they used. What platform did they use. So we're rolling. All right, look at this cool site. So what do you think? This is a preset, um, you know, they sell presets for like people like Jake, like lens, um, raw camera mm. presets or whatever. Okay, so it's like LUTs, but for something, raw presets. Yeah, something like that. So what do you think? What platform does this look like to you? Wix. Wix. <laughs> Plot twist. <laughs> Wix. Actually, Wix is the best one. End of video. End of video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what do you think? I don't know. It's hard to tell. It is hard to tell. I, I can tell you it's one of the two that we've been talking about. It is about. one of the two. I think it's... And it's nice and responsive. Pull it over here. I think it's um, WordPress. Okay. Is, what what makes you think that? I don't know, man. It's hard to tell. Yeah. I mean, it looks like a custom site, right? The the banner image is overlaying to here, which there's settings you can do to that. But the you know the logo being over the. Either way, it looks image. like they paid someone like five thousand dollars to make the site, probably. Or they or they are experienced coders, you know. So either way, it's a very professionally built site. So, um, this site is actually, I was looking at it the other day because I was like, this is a cool looking site. And as you can see here, WooCommerce, which we all know is a WordPress platform. So, they're using WooCommerce and WordPress together. And it's interesting because when I saw this site, I was like, this has got to be Squarespace because it looks so good. Um, but, you know, this is, this is an example of a premium theme on top of WordPress just being used to look really good. Because you, you don't normally get these, like, slick fonts and, like, you know, cool-looking elements with WordPress. And, again, this is, like, responsive and, you know, these animations. It makes it a very resource-intensive site, but it looks really good. So people don't usually associate that with... Uh, WordPress. I thought that was a cool site. So, anyway, that all being said, we're gonna go in and we're gonna create some sites, and yeah. I want you to show me your process for creating one. Okay. We're gonna make a site. <laughs> Create a site. Creating a site. I'm gonna make sure the cameras are still rolling. Oh, this one's not rolling. <laughs> we gotta do it over again. So we're just gonna create some really quick websites to show kind of. Let's uh do uh. What, so what so this is your process for creating one. You go in yeah. and you kind of choose uh, a category. Popular designs. Okay. And what's this thing up here at the top where you can like type in stuff? So it is just like basic categories that you can pick from. What's uh? Wait, is there a scroll? No go. What's that? 
Does it like search or something? I've never used this. This must be a new thing. Coffee. Oh, okay. Interesting. Cool. Well, we're gonna we're gonna go for it. We're gonna go with this one. Okay. Sweet. I've never used this template before. Well, I, I got a notification <laughs> that we so just started this actually space never, He's actually never created a site before. <laughs> I'm just like, like a guy he found on the street. I don't know what I'm doing. I needed someone to present the opposing viewpoint, so I just found something. <laughs> Homeless man. Okay, so you can go in here. Yes, I'm. I'm just gonna uh, remove everything. Well, the cool thing about this is it's if you're on a really like absolute budget, I mean, it's already done. The site's already done. The site is literally <laughs> yeah, it already looks, done. It looks like not your business, but it's there. But you can drag your images in there. And yeah, all oh, yeah, yeah, you just yeah, yeah. So leave the same words though. That's the that's the important part. So what you like to do is you like to blank everything out. I like to blank everything. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna. Make not linked a new blank page. Mm -hmm. and we'll call it new home. As you can see, it's a little bit slow because um, recording your screen apparently takes so many, so much processing. Processing. I don't know why. I need to like upgrade my GPU in this thing. This thing doesn't even have a GPU. Oh really? <laughs> Got the Intel. Oh yeah. HD graphics. Okay, so I deleted everything. You can't delete your homepage, but I made a new homepage, and I set the new homepage as a new homepage so I can delete the original homepage. Mm -hmm. So now we got nothing. We just got a non-link homepage, which means that it won't show up at the top, a home button, but if you click on here, then that'll be home. So let's go edit this. We're going to call it coffee. We're gonna, I, we went on a road trip a year ago year and a half ago yeah before oh, i had before i had a child well, let's 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 make a fake marketing company from our, our pictures that we got okay coffee equals um what's one of those like buzzwords that they use for like you know like like ai blockchain um, uh we're gonna be a generic video company and we're gonna have story in the name we should call yeah. it Story beans. Yeah, do that. Story beans. I, I like, like it. that. <laughs> and of course, Post coffee evolved. <laughs> and of course, you need a tagline. Uh, we create stories that <laughs> story. <laughs> All right. That and seems of course, good. Do we need a logo or? No. Wait, wait. I got you. I got you. I got you. What we got? We're gonna make a quick logo. There's this thing that if you're just if you're just the cheapest person ever and you don't have any time or money or anything and you just don't care. <laughs> wait, wait, this isn't it. This isn't it. It's there's this one that's like what is it? It's like this is it maybe. Create your logo in minutes. It's like a it's like a Microsoft Paint. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna make our logo. This is how you make a modern design, guys. We need we need a shape. So we're gonna do a ring. Oh yeah. I like that. But we're gonna change the color to be black. Brown. Go for the coffee bean. You gotta oh, the, yeah, you gotta yeah. the coffee bean. So I don't know how to do brown in this. Brown would be like kind of an orange that's desaturated. Yeah. And then we're gonna do another polygon. And do that. And we're gonna make it like slightly bigger. Well, let's change it from a ring to an oval, a, like a, a coffee bean, you know? Okay, okay, okay. And then we're gonna do that. We're gonna make this be like. Like that. Slightly disaturated to be like a modern feeling. Yeah, now. yeah, and then, and then flip the, the direction, like change your layers. That works. Yeah. And then um, this, you want to be an oval, right? So, wait, wrong one. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we got our logo. <laughs> we need, we need, we need like initials or something. Oh yeah, there you go. Text. Text. Uh. What's her, CS. What's her, comp what's, what's her company name? Oh wait, it's called Story Beans. Story Beans. B S. Bean Story. I like it. Story Beans. Let's drag it up. <laughs> Leave it blue. <laughs> Leave it blue. I mean, we're good. Let's have like a little bit of. Yes, and as you guys can tell, we are also very skilled designers. <laughs> This is a professional tool right here. You're not uh, gonna hear it. You're you're not gonna. You're just never gonna hear it from anyone else because they don't know about the secret of this awesome tool. Wow. Professional logo. <laughs> In what three minutes? Save logo. Save it. Save logo. What? Uh, what you gotta pay the Okay, okay, right. download. Re low resolution. Okay, there it is. Who cares? Now. There's just gonna be a little PNG. Now we're gonna upload it. Upload a little bit image. Where is it? Downloads? You can probably drag it. Yeah, I'm just gonna drag it, drop it. Wow. It's so beautiful. Let's uh save that. Does it like put your logo somewhere? Okay, so oh. we got a logo there. Oh, and it it hid your site title? Yeah, it'll switch it to that. Good design. I don't wanna change that so <laughs> that's real small. Yeah. So you can change things like that by uh, going into the design. Site styles. The styles tab is fantastic. It's like your CSS styles. It is. Of. It's just very easy to use. Cool. So I'll click on that. So it'll narrow down my stuff. Icons. Full background. Wait. What's the. There it is. Okay. Wait. Your computer is. Struggle yeah. bus right now. It's freaking out. Um, why don't we? I didn't do anything. That's, hold on, hold on. that's not it. Why don't we? Well, the width. There we go. Yeah. Well, you know, it's not the best thing ever. I don't <laughs> think it downloaded as a PNG. It's okay. It for this, we'll go with that. We'll go with it. It looks. Uh, change the vertical, horizontal, no, nope, bearing position, go center. Okay, nice. looks good. Um, and let's close some tabs here. Close that, and I'll open that later, and we'll return with that. Okay. Pumpkin Story apple. Beans. Okay, let's uh, let's go back to design, and we're gonna we're gonna pages. Mm-hmm. It's all empty. So we just have this page down here. We're on, we're good. Now I can start editing. Okay. What are well Media. Thumbnail banner image. Okay, this is this is where good stuff happens. Okay. So you got your images. I saved. got images that I pulled. And this was one of our friend Zach, and he's looking up at the sky, and it looks like the most amazing. Yeah, it. Inspirational. It's like a story. It's, it's like, like a story of, about beans. It's like he's thinking of a story. Yeah. To create. Like, That's a story. Cool. And it looks like it'll automatically compress it for you. Yeah, so good. Um, um, what's the SEO? Yeah, you can go in and type in. Oh, cool. Like. Yeah. So that's I, I don't want to get into that, yeah. but you, you can go in and change the des descriptions for, for stuff. Right, so that, that'll be a lot like what you can do with Yoast and SEO plugin. Sweet. Media, we're going to save. It'll set it as a background at the top, hopefully. Okay. Yep. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now, see he's looking at the logo. It's like he's playing this. <laughs> Yeah. We're going to go back to design. I don't want that to be bigger. So uh, So it's cropped it currently. Yeah, it crops it. Okay. You know, yeah. I it, I haven't used this template, so I don't know about ratios of like what it likes. But we're going to we're going to fatten that up cool. by uh making it taller size styles.
Yeah, so you're a lot less limited than I initially thought. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Let's enable that parallax. Heck yes. Nice. So parallax scrolling, if you guys don't know, is a style of scrolling that basically makes it look like the They're image. They're separated. Yeah. You know, so as you... And if you want to be cool and hip with your website, you definitely want to use yeah, it. Yeah, Parallax, that dude, that looks like straight up. Apple. Sweet. Okay, so you can edit. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to make a, a little, uh, we'll do text. I think text. Uh, we create stories that matter to the people that stories matter to. It's beautiful. <laughs> so this is a, another good lesson that... Um, Use stories like a thousand times if you, if you make a video production company. Yeah, and if you're doing a site for anyone... We love stories. Let us tell your story to... <laughs> The people who love stories and that may include yours. What's what's funny about this is you could just leave this as is. And I'm pretty sure this this kind of, this page will get business. Yeah, people would be like, "Wow, they're so they're so non-traditional. Yeah. Look at their yeah. logo. Their logo is like making fun of an era, <laughs> but it's so sleek and boutique." Yeah. Nice, and you have your little, I assume you can edit that. Yeah, yeah, you can edit all this stuff. And it's cool because you can edit it while, like, kind of moving around. So. They already got the little copyright symbol in there, so we're going to call this Beans Coffee. Okay, not sure that's how you swap coffee, but maybe. It's hip. Coffee Beans. Okay. Um, yeah. So, Stories. is there anything else special that you would like to show us while we're in here? Or does that pretty much cover it? The rest would just be creating pages, creating links to pages. Yeah, you'll that. make pages. We'll, we'll, we'll edit out. I'll, I'll add a little button. It looks like you got a lot of options here for blocks. Oh, you have a ton. And, and you can go in and do a lot of custom stuff with them. So, we're going to make mm -hmm. a meme looks fine. It's going to be contact. You're stopped. That's okay. We'll just go with this one for now. Sure. I mean, we probably already... But yeah. Sweet. So there's your extremely basic... We don't want people to know that we use Squarespace, so we're just going to delete that. <laughs> yes. That's the secret to any web design. I don't want to a double contact. Get rid of that. Get rid of that garbage. Nice. Yeah, so it's the block editor. Yeah. Um, I like this. I like the editor. Um, this is really easy to pitch to a client and show them, you know, how it works. Pretty. <laughs> um, and then we're going to go with video. Unsplash might be. Oh, you're going to. Okay, cool. So he's going to show us a video background functionality. No, we're going to do a cinematography. Why don't you do Zach's uh, demo reel? Does he even have one? I'm not sure. There's the top guy. Patrick O'Sullivan. Thank he, you, Patrick he, O'Sullivan. His demo reel got to the top of the, the search, so we're going to use it. I'm sure he won't care at all. Yeah, he won't care that we're making a fake site that includes his demo reel claiming it's our own. I'm sure he will not <laughs> get his copyright violations. Uh, Video. So this is this like embedding a video like so you can show someone, or is this like... You're trying to do a video background, or? Uh, I'm just embedding it. Cool, because I saw on one of your sites you had a video that was, um, like, in the background. Yeah, there's different ways to do stuff, depending on which template you use. I'm going to make two spacers, and I'm going to drop them. I have another friend who, uh... Let's go on spacer. Uh, 
drop spacer on left side and then this spacer drop it on the right side and then we'll stretch it out okay so that's your way of kind of kind centering of, it without yeah, kind of cheating it without without actually changing the size of the element yeah yeah it's, it's there's yeah. fake elements on each side to kind of yeah bend the system you want to you want to see what it looks like on mobile <laughs> we'll also add a sweet line element right here oh yeah lines are important to separate it and we'll add one right here to separate it more to have more separation because lines are hip yeah lines are definitely in right now they're in our site <laughs> so your screen does mobile really weird but yeah I mean it does it and you, you can, don't see his head. I, assume, I, assume I, would, I, would, I would have to go in and do work on the image to make you can it. You adjust know, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you always have to do that with any responsive designer. Cool. And, but it looks and no one great cares. on desktop. Yeah, and no one cares about iPad. Never edit for iPad. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, some people use them, but okay. So I'm gonna take this concept and show you how to do it on WordPress. Yeah. So I'm not going to try to create a site that looks like this um, just because I think that you can spend a lot of time you can spend a lot of effort and time trying to get a site to look like Squarespace or a certain thing and there's just so many ways to do it like there's just like like you saw the site that we looked at earlier that would be an example of a theme centered site so everything that you're doing is dependent upon the theme okay when I design sites, I don't necessarily rely so heavily on the theme. I have a lot of different things that I do. So we're going to go in and create our test site. Go to inworksdigital.com slash test site slash WP admin. Okay, so the way that I approach building sites, um, it's a little bit different. So Mason started out by choosing a template, essentially. He was choosing what theme to choose. So I'm going to close this site. And um, I'm going to do a similar thing, except for I don't really care as much about the theme. A lot of the WordPress designers are more hardcore than I am. And they would say, we basically create themes or we create child themes from the ground up to just be totally whatever you want. For this video, I'm not going to get into that. But the theme I have active is called Hestia. Hestia just comes preset with these, you know, just a blank home page. And so we'll go to the home page, look at it. I've already got it set up. It's like, a, it's just, this is just the default. Um, so I'm going to do a similar thing as Mason. Um, you can see here it does the menu thing that's kind of cool that, you know, comes down and turns white when you scroll so it's kind of useful if you're and you can um, with what I'm going to show you we can you, your menu doesn't matter as much so if you want to edit and give your customers an easy way to edit the best way to do that is a plugin called Elementor Elementor is a page builder and it's basically like imagine putting Squarespace into WordPress. <laughs> yeah. And the way we're going to do this is we'll go in here. Um, first of all, actually, let me go ahead and add my logo because um, we definitely need our logo. So you go to Customize. This is kind of the, your theme customization. Um, your theme customization, it looks a lot like what Mason was doing, but you're fairly limited in this in the sense that you can't, you know, you can change certain things kind of like what he was doing. But you can't change pages. It's know? it's all within the parameters of the of the theme. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna put our logo in. So we go over here to site identity, select logo, and load in our BS logo. We can go ahead and crop it like that. So nice, 
got our logo up there. Um, and on this particular theme, it's what's what's confusing to a lot of people is yeah, it's gonna be different on every single. It's gonna be different on every single site you do. So on this particular theme, we're gonna go to site layout. So here we're gonna go over to our navigation layout, change it up to be, you know, similar to what he was dealing with. You know, you got your menu items here, scrolls. Personally, I think that looks stupid, but we're not gonna get into all that late today. Um, so what you would do is, after you like that, um, I'm going to go ahead and disable everything on this theme. I'm actually not a huge fan of this theme, but I'm just going to use it as an example of what you can do with themes and what you can do with your kind of page builders. So we're just going to disable everything. Hestia developed by Themeisle. Um, publish that. And so we're going to go in. I think Mason... You can already tell he won the speed battle. But, um, so I'm going to edit this home page with Elementor. So edit with Elementor. And it's going to give me this blank, like, you know, welcome. Sweet. Robust. <laughs> <laughs> Just like beans should be. We're gonna do what he did and create a new. Home I mean, page. you the this computer is like screaming at this point with all those stuff that we're doing. So yeah, the uh, yeah home one. So we're gonna edit this page real quick, and I'm just gonna show you what you can do with Elementor in particular. You can just disable everything, and. So that means now, with Elementor, Elementor is our builder. So that means that if you're going to build with Elementor, and you're not going to get the pro version, you need to select a theme that has a good header for you, that has a good header that you like, and that has a good fo footer. And so there's a lot of modern themes out there that are going to have a similar look to what you know Mason was dealing with. And then we can go in and drag our widgets. Mm -hmm. So let's say I want to do what you did, and we want to do a we want to do a banner image. I want to show you this first and show you that this is a good way to get some ideas. Um, if you see this folder here, we we'll go here to it'll give us some templates. And um, these are some sites that are already kind of built. So let's see what we got here. One thing that's important um, if if you're doing it either way is to if you're doing template based templates are bendable but the header and the footer is a big part and then some things mm -hmm. have functionality like some Squarespace uh, you, you can't have video backgrounds some other templates you can and so it's it's a it, it's partly a little bit of research and figuring out what all you want to the end product to look like because you don't want to build it all the way and then it turns out that you got to have it another way. Um, because you can switch your template, but stuff shifts, and I, I don't recommend doing it that way. I recommend making sure you get your template right from the beginning. Right. Um, and I would recommend... I would definitely recommend choosing a template that you that you really like from the beginning, like Mason's saying. Um, so, another thing you can do with Elementor is you can do a completely... You can do with Elementor Pro, which in my opinion is it's fifty dollars, and it's the most valuable WordPress plugin that you can get because it comes with the most stuff. Um, so what we can do, and you can just drag those, and you gotta kind of if you're gonna drag them in, you gotta create a new little spot, little box. Okay, yeah, yeah. Dra drag it in a bunch. Yeah, Get that image in there. There we go. The professional way to compress your images for web is to take a screenshot of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's honestly what I did with these. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. Screenshot. It'll load fast, you know? Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, so that what you've done is you've made a uh, yeah, but I don't know how to go. You know, yeah, so what I would do instead of this, this is like if you want to show up an image and image. tell something about it. But what I would do is I would actually take this. This is a full. They created this element here and they've made this entire thing an image. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to delete this. Okay, that's good. And I'm going to switch it with this. And it's the same thing. Sweet. And it has an icon overlay. So let's delete this. Let's add in our awesome logo. It's so good. And that logo is just. Yeah, and of course, modern logos, modern sites can handle transparency pretty well. Um, so what we can do now is make it bigger. The logo. The <laughs> logo. Okay. Yeah. Um, image size full. Could be in full. Make it like. So you can replace his head with the logo. Yeah. And um, you can also do parallax scrolling on this. Um, let's see here. We could do... To do this, let's do... So that's kind of like... You know, it's a fixed position. A fixed parallax, yeah. And then um, you can also do on the pro version, which I have on some of my other sites, you can also do full parallax scrolling, which basically means I can make these things, um, I can make these things appear with the scrolling. I can make them fade out with the scrolling, you know, things like that. Um, I can make them entrance in, kind of like a PowerPoint, like welcome, you know. Um, so let's go ahead and you can see here that you have full customization over the titles and stuff. So I like personally doing black fonts because I think it gives the best visibility and it also, it looks the best. Um, and I think people have different kind of opinions on that. Um, I would change this to, let's see what font they used here, OVO. And a lot of this is going to be Google Fonts, which you might want to do some research into. Google Fonts can be kind of resource intensive. So let's see what this looks like. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do here. It's the same sort of thing. You can pull up your elements and then we got some slideshows going. We can replace these all with our own images. Mm -hmm. It's just an image gallery. Um, you know, so that's the cool thing about templates is for someone who's just starting out, you don't know what the elements are. And you can see a really good example that will give you an idea of what you could use your elements. Like yeah. What you could do with your elements. So, um, yeah, so this would be just kind of how you would use... How you would use WordPress, WordPress. To, uh, to build the same kind of same kind of experience. Thing. Yeah, you know you can build it, and it's not going to be as fancy looking, but you can probably do about the same amount of stuff. And you could actually do, you can customize things. Yeah, it seems really customizable. The other thing is, if you need to do something that is not editable by you, you can insert a custom CSS here, mm -hmm. and you can. You know, you can add the custom CSS for that particular block. Sure. So it's, and you can do that, of course, in your theme as well. So there's options. A lot of options. I seem like a lot of options. Yep. And, and it intimidates people. But again, like with what we're saying here, it's, you know, depending on what you want to do, you know, you got to decide what tool to use. So, um, you know, with WordPress, you're going to have to, it's, it's a little bit more complex. For sure. Mm -hmm. So, and right now I only have a few plugins. I only have Elementor and basically nothing else. You don't want to rely too heavily on plugins. Um, that's another thing that just you want to try to do everything without having a ton of plugins installed on your site. You know, because if it's if you happen to get a plugin that's not coded properly, it can 
really slow down your site. Yeah, I mean, or just like updates happen, you know. One plugin updates, but the other one doesn't, and they don't communicate as well. Yeah, compatibility. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I think that pretty much shows the capability of both. You know, we didn't go into like crazy detail, but you know, you got you get the picture of what you can do and what you can't do. So. Yeah. Yeah. So what we learned is use Squarespace. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> use whatever one you want. Yeah, I mean they're both they're both great, and it doesn't matter when someone sees your site on the end. Of, you know, if, who cares what you use to make it? It's just about the content that you put in it. Yeah. Going back to you know writing, who cares? They use Microsoft Word, and everyone uses Microsoft Word. It doesn't matter. So now we're going to talk about Square versus PayPal. <laughs> Payment Next week, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that covers it. Yep. <laughs> All right, guys. So thanks for watching, and I hope that this was helpful for you. I know a lot of people who are going out building their own site or trying to figure out what their best option is. Hopefully this will give you a couple ideas on what to choose, what option to use. So thank you, Mason, for coming to the, uh, thank you, Mason, for helping with the video. Yeah. His site is nectarproduction.com. Mm -hmm. And if you want to order some honey, honey. <laughs> we we don't sell some. honey. <laughs> Them. It is pretty sweet though. Yeah. The content on the side is pretty sweet. Yeah. Alright. Thanks a lot. <laughs>